Hey everybody, it is me, Cardi. I am a student filmmaker, and I am here to show you how I do things. So, a lot of people have been asking me uh, about my Red IPP2 workflow, which I found out from someone else is a great way to handle your raw footage, um, especially your Blackmagic raw footage, to give it a nice, punchy, and filmic look. Uh, so, here's how I do it. First off, so that, you know, we have two shots here, two talking heads. I have fixed the exposure on this one. I've already brought it down because I did overexpose it. This one has been left as is. I did touch the white balance before. So let's go to Project Settings and go to Color Management. We're going to go from DaVinci YRGB to YRGB Color Managed. And I've already put in these settings, so here is what they are. Uh, we have Timeline Color Space, Red Wide Gamut, RGB Log G, 3G10, Output color space rec 7, gamma 2.4, output color space none. And this is where it gets really interesting. Now you can you can kind of adjust this how you want, but what, what I find works best for me for the output tone map, um, you know, we're going to choose red IPP2 because that's our workflow. Output tone map to high, and then highlight roll off to very soft. I think that that is the best look that you can get from this, from these settings. All right, so now that that's taken care of, let's see the difference here. Wow, that off the bat, you know, it looks like a standard Rec. Seven image. You know, it looks pretty good. You got got nice highlight roll off and everything. It's pretty good. So now here's here's how I kind of further fix that. So let's do color space transform. We're not going to transform gamma or anything. We're just going to change the color space because the black magic color science leans towards magenta and it is ugly and I hate it. And we can fix it. So here's what I do personally. You can do this your own way, but this is what I this is what I think is the best way to get out of it. So we're gonna input color spaces 4K film Gen 3. Now this this really isn't our input. This is our input would be the pocket 4K, but uh, we're just gonna do this as a starting point. Output color space Arri Alexa, and look at that. The difference is stunning. Skin tones just look so much better. And then let's get our black levels down because they're a little bit raised right now. So let's. Make sure those aren't we're borderline, you know, crushing. It looks good. And then my last uh, little tweak, just give the shadows some colors. I, you are you are crushing detail in the red channel, but who's gonna notice? I just think this looks really nice. Before, after, and yeah, that, that does look looks pretty good. So now let's try it with this clip, which I've already fixed the exposure of, and that looks you know like a nice standard image. Let's do our color space transform of Blackmagic 4K Gen 3 to Airy Alexa. And then let's pull, let's pull our shadows down. That looks good. And let's just add some color to our shadows. Now, this isn't the right best way to do it. Um, but, you know, I'm just doing a quick and dirty method. Change our low range so it doesn't affect my skin as much. There we go. That looks good. And that is my process. It's a, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Now you can use Asus or you can do color space transform, but I think that this deals with your skin tones the best. Um, and color space transform, eh, it's just it's too messy in my opinion. Um, maybe one day I'll do my Asus workflow as well. But right now this is what I'm sticking with. I haven't gotten it to work very well with ProRes yet. You need to make sure that you're using raw footage because it's easier for the curve and color space to change. With ProRes, it doesn't translate as well, and your footage looks really weird. I'm going to try and figure out a workaround, and if I do, I'll make an update video. But this is what I do for now, and I hope you enjoy this, and may Michael Bolton be with you. Praise be.